So if you guys. You have to check to see if they're assigned. All right, everyone, short driver's meeting, or wrapping up qualifying. Uh, stage one, we the end of lap 20, when the leader hits the end of lap 20. Stage two, we the completion of lap 40, total lap 90. Um, same rules as always, a couple new guys here, so we'll go down, maintain right side of pit road on entry and exit. Don't pass more through more than three pit stalls uh, before you're in pit stall. Um, one restart, maintain your line, don't change lanes before the start finish line. Any questions or concerns? Live from the Pocono Raceway in Long Pond, Pennsylvania, it's another evening of National Sim Racing League Cup Series action. In the virtual Pocono Raceway, we turn the page on the first half of the season tonight. It's the Pennsylvania 225 from the Tricky Triangle. We say good evening, race fans. Marty Sakala with you on the call. So glad you could join us for live action. Well, we are not wasting any time. We are getting right down to business. Let's give you the starting lineup. Ashton Crowder and Josh Suzy make up the front row. Tyler Rush and Dylan Clark in row number two. Kayla McCarthy and Tyler Isley 
In row number three, row four, Brian Wiggins and Brian Preslar. Rounding out the top ten, David Salter and David Sweel Jr. In row number six, Daniel Menzies and Ryan Broderick. Row seven gives us Robbie Bice and Alan Crowell. In the eighth row, Briggs Swope and Josh Aaron, teammates from the DraftKings Racing Team. Row nine gives us Justin Dilt and Tom Para. Row number ten, Jimmy Barr and Mark Sikosi. And rounding out the field is James Miller in car number 21. So that's how they line up for tonight. 20 men and women strong, ready for the green flag. Let's give you our weather recap for tonight. It is the it is eight, 78 degrees is our air temperature. 81 degrees is the track temp. Should provide for some awesome racing. 90 laps around the tricky triangle. Stages will end at laps 20 and 40. Three unique turns. Turn number one, based off of the former Trenton Speedway uh, at the Trenton Airport in New Jersey. Turn number two, much like the famous Indianapolis Motor Speedway. And turn number three, the Milwaukee Miles. And we're just about set to go racing as the field ready to roll off. Give you your recap. Last week it was Josh Susie taking home the win at... Um, at Nashville Super Speedway. Caleb McCarthy second, Tyler Isley third, Mark Sikosi fourth, Brian Wiggins. That was the top five. Here's how the chase grid looks after 17 races on the year. Josh Susie has five wins. Uh, same with Ashton Crowder. And then in third is Tyler Isley with two wins. Fourth, Mark Cook also with two wins. Fifth, Mark, excuse me, Mark Sikosi with the win. Sixth, sixth, Caleb McCarthy with the win. 7th, Alan Crow with the win. 8th is Otto Cruz with the win. Ninth, James Morris with a win as well. 10th is Josh Aaron. 11th, Briggs Swope. And 12th, Justin Dilt. 13th, Jimmy Barr. 14th, Justin Cope. 15th, Dylan Clark. 16th is Brian Preslar. It is a one-point difference separating Preslar from John Crow Sr. in the points. And it's Jeremy Edwards, Brennan Poole, and William Farmer. The final four the first four that are out. Going through turn number two. A pair of drivers from the KTS camp that have been so strong all season long, combining for 10 wins on the season. As they make their way into turn number three. The fans, it's time to get up on your feet. As we say, race fans, it's also time to strap in and hold on tight because these men and women are about to turn them loose and drop the sledgehammer. What turn four? That's right, it's Pocono with only three turns. Pace car is in, Crowder and Susie the front row, and it's showtime at Pocono. Into turn number one for the first time, Ashton Crowder holding off Josh Suzy. Good battle for third between Tyler Rush and Kayla McCarthy. Rush clearing McCarthy for position number three as they come off of turn number one down the long pond back straight away. Battle is on for fifth position as Brian Wiggins trying to clear Tyler Isley, which he does as Isley and McCarthy in the battle for position off turn number two. We'll go through the each, each corner with you in just a few moments as Isley tries to hold off McCarthy. McCarthy lets Isley go in turn number three. But meanwhile, off of turn three, it's Ashton Crowder that takes lap number one at the start-finish line. We went through, did a little bit of testing earlier on throughout the race weekend. And let's show you what turn one is like. We'll go on board a little later of the next lap for the drivers. Got to let off here just a little bit as you enter turn number one. Then you can get back on the gas full throttle. You see Broderick try to peek inside on Kayla McCarthy in the battle for position. So go down that back straight away once again. Now, on, now once you get into a second or a third lap in on a green flag run, you can hold it full throttle in turn number two. Oh, you got to be careful though if you're Ryan Broderick. Overdrove turn number two, 
got really tight. There's a lot of understeer in that number five, so he has to wait one more lap before he can go full throttle. Then in turn three, you just have to let off barely. So let's ride on board with the driver of specifics. We'll start things off with Josh Aaron in the number 77. He's got the draft off of Daniel Menzies, which is what you want at Pocono. You see, he's got to let off there just a moment. Just about like maybe three seconds, and bam, right back on the gas. I was working a lot with Menzies in one of the unofficial test and tune sessions. Just trying to get a feel for the track, and he was telling me a lot more about it. Then here in turn number two, what does he do? Let's off barely. But then Bam right back in and wants to avoid using up his tires big time. And oh, we got one sideways. That's David Salter in the number 88. His iRacing paint scheme is number 20. But heavy damage to David Salter. And he'll bring his machine in the pit road early. As I was saying, by the way, we were talking about having the draft early. As you watch Tyler Isley as he's stuck on the outside, battling with Kayla McCarthy for sixth position. We'll ride on board with Isley in just a little bit. And you can see what it's like. Ryan Broderick takes a look inside on McCarthy. Let's see what it's like in turn number two for Broderick. Let's off barely for just a moment. And watch turn number three. He's feathering the throttle, then once he gets past that Coca-Cola sign, he's bam right back in it. So Salter with an early pit stop of 14.7 seconds and comes back out, but he comes back out just, oh, just about on the last car on the lead lap almost going a lap down. There you see the leader right there still continues to be Ashton Crowder as he comes down. Oh, car of the wall hard. That's Broderick in the five. And that car just immediately snapped from him in turn one, came back up, got the wall, left him going straight. However, though, that engine is toast. And Broderick will need a will need to use a quick repair early. Let's uh, let's see if we can give you what just happened in that onboard. As Broderick brings his machine down into pit road. Here's a good angle for you. Watch Broderick. Car just got loose, over connected overcorrected and got the wall just pancaked the Valverlane number five. And I think likely Broderick going a lap down early. Another car in the pits as well. That's Jimmy Barr just topping off on fuel and back out. But this is a uh, must quick repair stop for the number five of Ryan Broderick will update you on his position in just a moment. As Ashton Crowder continues to lead, let's give you the best. We'll check Broderick here as he exits pit road. I think he's going to go a lap down here. And he will. Leaders go by, so Ryan Broderick currently the first car a lap down, but he's in last place. Go to a couple of good battles happening mid-pack. That is Brick Swope in the seven in front of him. Robbie Bice on the 28, making his first broadcasted start. And then Mark Sikosi trying to look on the outside. Sikosi starting from that last position. Earlier on, up to 13th, got by Bice on the outside, taking a look in the tunnel turn. Up by Brick Swope. Oh! Got the quarter panel on Brick Swope, and he got the wall. That's a, bit, that's a very close call if you're Briggs Swope. A lot of drivers getting into it very hard. Let's, let's watch that pass once again. Sikosi, oh, just got him up the track, was in his groove. 
nowhere for Briggs Swope to go, and he's bringing his car down pit road. And a lot of right side damage on Briggs Swope early on. Dylan Clark in the number 34, just ran his fastest lap of the race, not overall of all drivers, but a 53. Point three for the driver of the 34, currently in seventh place. This is the best battle on track, looking on Brian Wiggins in the number one Pennzoil machine. It says number 18 up top, but trust me, it's number one in our hearts. Wiggins may have just touched the wall for a moment, still hanging in there with Kayla McCarthy, Tyler Isley, Tyler Rush, Josh Susie, and Ashton Crowder, all those KTS drivers. Currently one through five, your top five at the moment. So Brick Salter, Brick Swope comes back out, going a lap down. He was able to merge properly, but didn't want to get in front of all those drivers. Cause a big wreck. Tyler Rush trying to look to the inside on Dylan Clark for position. Couldn't find anything there. As you continue to see all the drivers, McCarthy trying to take a peek inside on Tyler Isley for position number three. Couldn't do anything about it. Now you see what the drivers are trying to do here as, as well, and this will be key. Drivers are trying to be like a snake. What they're trying to do is break the draft of all the drivers out there and try and make sure they stay up ahead as Isley's loose. Hang on, Tyler. Got a little bit too much back in the gas in turn number one. Makes a nice save, but Isley losing just a couple of positions. That puts Tyler back into position number six. So didn't really lose too much there to the leaders, but now faces a battle with his fellow nemesis, Tyler. That being Tyler Rush for position number five. Ten laps to go in stage one at the line for the driver of the number one, Ashton Crowder. He currently leads at Pocono as we take you side by side in the Pennsylvania 225.
We're back at the Pocono Raceway, everyone. Apologies for the technical difficulties. Seven laps to go in stage number one. You see a battle for second position on your screen. Josh Susi, Kayla McCarthy, and Dylan Clark. Everyone just being quiet for right now as Salter. Or, uh, you want to pass. That's David Salter. Running the line, dude. You good? That's David Salter on the radio, currently the last driver on the lead lap. And this is a situation that Ryan Broderick does not want to see. You're helping me. So stay in my way, please. Because if Salter goes... <laughs> because if Salter goes one lap down, he gets Never the mind. free pass. Trouble! Tyler Isley is around oh, in the nice 17. Caution flag is out. First yellow of the evening. And the front end is destroyed on the 17, and that's off of turn number one. Remember we talked about how Isley had a loose car. We saw him have a big wiggle in turn one and made a great save. I'm not sure if that was the same issue. We'll take a look and see if he had some help. Nope, he just got loose on the exit of turn number one. That's all by himself. Hits the bump. There's a little bump on in the apron off of turn number one. Where if you're going really fast, that car can send you sideways. Let's show you from another angle. There it is, that bump right there and gets the safer barrier. Let's ride along with Isley and show you what that bump is like. Yep, he was just loose. Got to give him credit as well for not hitting that opening with that, with that inside wall angles out. It was right in front of Briggs Swope, by the way. So let's see if we can watch it onboard with Swope. It is, and Swope did catch the wall for just a moment. So the caution flag is out with five laps to go in the stage. Excuse me. This should give us a restart with just about two laps to go in stage number one. Again, your race leader, Ashton Crowder. He's led all the laps so far today. And everyone is coming into the pits. First stops of the evening. By the way, drivers have five sets of tires. So because so including their opening set and the first set they're about to change that gives drivers just about three sets of tires left in this race. One driver choosing to stay out and lead a lap. That's Tom Para in the number 16. Brian Preslar, looks like he missed his pit stall in the 67. Mark Sacosi also missing his stall. So it's Crowder, then McCarthy, Susie, Clark, and Wiggins. That's your top five all out. So Tom Para is currently the race leader. By the way, don't forget fans, Sim Racing just got a major upgrade. How would you like to drive a Formula One car on iRacing? Well, the Mercedes AMG F1W12E performance is out. The eight-time defending constructors champions bring their latest challenger to iRacing. Buy now on iRacing.com. All you just need is a subscription to the iRacing platform. And for those interested in iRacing and looking to start their sim racing career, check out www.iRacing.com. So top three trying to play some strategy and save a set early and use that set during the stage break, not lose too much time and win the stage. And they are in a battle for a top 10 spot. And here comes Preslar and Sakosi. I think they were banking on trying to lead a lab. But they say it's not worth it. 
so they went an extra lap instead. But Para deciding still to stay out. And that is an interesting decision by Tom Para. So this will give us a two-lap shootout in stage one. And we'll reset it for you. Tom Para selects the inside line for this restart. Ashton Crowder restarts in second. Kayla McCarthy and Josh Susi. that is row number two. Row three, that's Dylan Clark and Brian Wiggins in the fourth row. Tyler Rush and Josh Aaron. And rounding out the top ten is, as we're confirming here, Daniel Menzies and Tyler Isley. So Isley, even with the quick repair, he'll restart in the tenth position, so didn't lose really too much time. The yellow, though, helped out Ryan Broderick. He is back on the lead lap, but the last car on the lead lap as well. But he'll have to restart tail end for getting, receiving the EOL. Robbie Bice still on pit road. This is a longer stop than we expected. So he's currently a lap down and would get the free pass at the end of stage one. That's what we are expecting. Tom Para is the control car as we get ready to go back to the green flag. Pace car is in. Para again, the control car on this restart. And he fires early. We're back to green. Got to be careful not to change lanes. He does right there. Crowder gets a nice toe off of the 16 and Crowder does he try and look to the inside not just yet he waits he waits and takes a higher line tries to go around the outside on Para we've got a new leader Ashton Crowder takes the lead back Susie goes second car up in the wall that's Aaron in the 77 stacks the field up and here we go big wreck with Para Isley involved as well and that does it for the stage now this brings up the question, what was Para thinking? And it literally just stacked the field up and possibly ended a driver's day way earlier than we thought. So Para gets involved in that one. We're listening. Stage one. And we're hearing that is the end of stage one. Justin Diltz in the 23 also involved. And Tom Para, and officially the engine just blew up. And we're hearing too, Ryan Broderick got a piece of it as well, unless he hit the brakes to miss the crash. And we're hearing also involved was not brake swope. We go another car ahead. Dylan Clark in the 34 also got a piece of it. Hey, Mindy, that was my car look. Well, let's take a look and see the official reason the caution came out. By the way, stage one is officially concluded. We'll watch here off the corner. A couple of cars got into the wall, and it started with Aaron into the wall. Let's actually rewind the footage for you at home and show you what happened. A lot of cars just... Simply going around the 16. And a lot of drivers just using two grooves higher than expected because Pear is on the low line. And because of that, Aaron scrapes the wall. And Dylan Clark just trying to check up in the 34 machine. And then Isley also a part of the stack up too. And then it's on from there. Isley comes down into Para. That sends a spin-out effect happening. Dylan Clark having nowhere to go. And there's also the 18 and a net code effect. A lot of junked up race cars. There's Briggs Swope. And we'll get the onboards for you here in just a moment as the leaders are in the pit road and we have strategy taking place with 
the stage. And then Ashton Crowder is the stage winner. So we'll see who wins the pay race off pit road. But the big one in pit road is Tyler Isley. Having to use some time to repair his number 17 machine. Ashton Crowder, I would, I'm assuming he's taking a bathroom break. Dylan Clark won the race off pit road despite being involved in that accident. And then there is Alan Crow coming on out in second spot. So Josh Susi assumes the race lead from what we are hearing is the 25 of Menzies. We know he's pitted already, so let's get you with some onboards following the crash. We'll start things off with Dylan Clark in number 34. Tom Para. Simply minding his own business, just letting the field go by. This is D Justin Dilt, and we're assuming he stopped to miss this. And that he did put it down in the first gear. Dilt stops the car, just making sure. Unless is he stuck? Nope, he's good. So one lap until we get the green flag to begin stage number two. And a couple of drivers playing some strategy early here. So we reset the field as we get ready to go back to the green flag. Susie selects the outside line for this restart. Kayla McCarthy next to him in row one. Row number two, that is Brian Wiggins and Tyler Rush. The third row gives us Jimmy Barr and Daniel Menzies. Row number four is David Salter from being a lap down from being from hitting the wall. Next to him, Brian Preslar. And rounding out the top ten, Mark Sikosi and uh, Dylan Clark. So a couple of drivers playing some strategy here. Nine drivers stayed out after stage number one, saving a set of tires. Keeping them with three sets left. The rest of the drivers have two sets left. By the way, let us know who you were rooting for in the chat. And again, we're so glad you could join us for live coverage of the National Sim Racing League Cup Series. Josh Susi, your control car as we get ready to go back to the green flag to begin stage number two, which ends at lap 40. Susi fires, we're back to green. McCarthy matches on the restart. No one pushing the 24. Rush working with Susie on this restart. Can Susie clear the McCar McCarthy machine and hold serve? The answer is yes. Rush is third, Wiggins fourth, Daniel Menzies is fifth, as you've got a major stack up two by two down the long pond straightaway. Dylan Clark trying to look to the inside of Dave Salter for seventh. Some drivers will have to give inch on this restart. Got to be careful going full throttle and they get away from that clean and green. Sikosi trying to look with those fresh tires. Now Sikosi is one, has already used two sets of tires as well. Keep that in mind as they're all straight for right now. See Ryan Broderick thinking about looking up to that inside of Dave Salter for a position. The battle for the lead is on. McCarthy thinks about looking to the inside and gets outbroken by Josh Susie in turn one. 
It's about a two car length lead for Susie on McCarthy. Couple of looks, that's Ashton Crowder in the back who just took a bathroom break. Tries to look up down to the inside. That is on Crowell in a battle for 12th position. Can hit the easy button right there. But that's a lot of traffic right up ahead of him. Tries to get a big run on Mark Sakosi off the corner. In front, meanwhile, McCarthy holding off a couple of drivers at bay. Fastest lap of this race. How about this? Ryan Broderick of 53.05. Two other drivers set their personal best. Jimmy Barr of 53.24 and Dave Salter of 53.47. Also add James Miller, 53.74. Dave Steele, 53.71. Side by side behind them, Jimmy Barr trying to look on Dylan Clark. Oh boy, Barr has to slide up the track or else he would have gotten into Dylan Clark. And to back out of that throttle there and in comes Brian Preslar in the number 67. Good racing up in front. Brian Wiggins all over Tyler Rush in the battle for third. Watch Wiggins closely here. He's going to try and look to the inside, possibly, as there's the train. Rush pulls up inside, and a different line for Wiggins. That costs him another spot. Broderick to the inside, takes away four. Salter, 53-44. Crowell, 53-39. Miller, 53-56. All running great times. Their personal best once again. See what Broderick does as he pull up down to the inside. He gets a run up in the outside. Got moved out of the way by Brian Wiggins. Couple of drivers. Loose as Dave Salter is up there on the radio. Oh, he must have gotten loose off of turn two. I don't know. And he is continuing to lose a spot. Stuck in a battle for ninth position with Brian Preslar. And back into tenth he goes. Wow, look at Crowder. All the way down two lanes like he's using the fast lane on the interstate. Excuse me, pardon me, coming through. I'm back in the top ten. It's very surprising here at Pocono to see a couple of, see not really, not just one team pull away, but a lot of drivers up here. And, I mean, I don't know if you could really call this an intermediate, but it's like a flat intermediate or something. But it should be really a little bit spread out, but you see a lot of single-file trains currently. And you got to give credit to Ryan Broderick and Brian Wiggins currently have made it a top three KTS showing at the moment. Salter on the radio just saying, let go by Sakosi. Clear the mark. On board with the five of Broderick. It's he tries to set this pass up on Tyler Rush. Keeping it on the low line. Great exit from Broderick. He could have a run, but he doesn't have the draft like Rush does, and he tucks back in line. Ashton Crowder making his way back up. Thought about looking inside on Jimmy Barr. I thought for a moment Crowder was going to try the top shelf in turn number two. A tough move for Crowder on Barr, but yep, he thinks second of it. I think it's gonna try and make its move across the start finish line. Crowder, by the way, just set his PB at 53.14. Up on the outside, tug on tech. Barr and Crowder get together, they're in the inside wall. Caution, flag is out. And now the question that gets brought up is what on earth were they thinking? Holy smokes, you didn't, I j nobody saw that coming. Crowder involved along with Jimmy Barr. Wow. You saw it live. See if we can get you another angle of what happened between Barr and Crowder. Crowder tried the outside. There was room, and Barr just simply comes up. And hard head-on shots into the inside wall. 
and they will have to go to quick repairs. Let's let's watch the blimp feel. Let's watch from our aerial shot here. Bar, I think, just comes up. We've got a drone angle as well we can watch closely, too. There is room. Bar gave him the room. It just comes into Crowder. And that's what leads to that Debaco. Let's ride him over with Crowder. This is something we did not expect. The lane was open for Crowder. Now let's go to Jimmy Barr. That's a tough break for Crowder. We'll have to go to a quick repair. But I don't think Crowder is uh, too scared at all. Let's check and see. Our pit road should be open this time. And we'll check and see if we have some takers. Of course, we'll see Barr and Crowder come in. That's not a surprise. But the yellow flag is out. couple of takers Wiggins comes in now he's already at two stops and we've got just about maybe over 10 drivers coming in And we'll see here who wins the race off pit road. And it's Josh Aaron. Remember, he's got some damage after scraping the wall early on in this race. So a couple of two-tire strategies, a couple of four-tire strategies, and that would leave the drivers with only one tire set left to go. So as the drivers finish up their pit stop, we'll go to break here at the moment. Josh Susi, your race leader at Pocono. Stay with us. With the Butt Kicker Gamer 2, what you see and what you hear is what you feel. Butt kicker. The future is feeling.
We're ready to go back to green here in stage number two with just about eight laps to go in the stage. Let's reset the field here for you as we come back to the green flag. Josh Susi, the leader, he selects the inside line. Kayla McCarthy is next to him. Row number two, Tyler Rush and Ryan Broderick, the third row. That belongs to Dylan Clark and David Smeal. In row number four, Josh Aaron and Brian Wiggins. And row five is Justin Dilt and Daniel Menzies. Field comes by, stacked up two by two. Pace car in, Susie the control car as we come back to the green. Nobody working with Susie this time in the draft. They want, they want to push Kayla McCarthy. She's got the line in the turn number one. Can she clear Susie? Yes, she can. Kayla McCarthy gets the run from Tyler Rush and feels the rush of adrenaline to take the lead. Susie back to second, Rush stays in third, fourth Dylan Clark, Ryan Bar Broderick is fifth. And they're side by side for a position. Brian Wiggins trying to look inside on David Smeal Jr. Does he have the run? Oh, he gets tight. Oh, be careful, Brian Wiggins. Has to deal with Justin Dilts in that number 23, nearly side by side. Look at Sakotsi, three wide in turn number three. Down to the inside he goes, he wants that 10th position. It's seven laps to go for stage number two. Final spot belongs to Ashton Crowder in 10th, trying to rebound after the last caution came out for him. Paxdale two by two behind them. Inside though for position is Smeal on Aaron. That's off of one, it's Aaron nearly hit the wall like he did a couple of laps ago. Here's the battle for the race lead. Susie thinking about inside on McCarthy, not just yet. For a fun fact for the kids at home, this is the same track that Kayla McCarthy won in season one of the Powerhouse Racing League. So she knows how to find victory lane here easily. Let's go behind them, Smeal and Aaron are going at it, that's for seventh spot on the line with Wiggins right behind them. Six laps to go in the stage, Crowder, hello! I want to get into this mess too, you know. Inside on Aaron, that's for seven, hit the easy button, Wiggins gets tight two for one discount at the grocery store. All the way up into sixth position, just set his fastest lap of the, his PB at a 53.13. He's trying to close in, same with Dylan Clark, 53.27, Mark Sakosi at a 53.36. Clark all over, Rush in the battle for third position. Let's go behind as here's Sakosi inside on Smeal with five to go in stage one. Drag race at the line, you can give it to Sakosi by a bumper. Wiggins right behind in this mess as well. And Smeal slams the door on Sakosi. Sakosi though, tries to fight back. There's the battle happening for a position. Ryan Broderick looking on Dylan Clark. We've got a car in the pits. And that's Barr in the 81, I think he's calling it a night. Back on that battle for eighth spot, Sakosi by Smeal. And Ryan Wiggins tries to enter this battle. Update on Crowder, still trying to close in on Broderick. Oh, Crowder way wide in three. Almost got the wall, seven tenths of a second behind Broderick, he won stage one. It'll be tough to win stage number two now. We've got a battle for the lead. Here comes Josh Suzy inside on Kayla McCarthy. The teammates are going to race it out. And Suzy to the point on Tyler Rush and Kayla McCarthy. McCarthy lost two spots big time and could lose more because Clark and Broderick are right behind him. Right behind her, excuse me. See what happens as you see Crowder going by Broderick for fifth. 
Takes that away with no problem. He is not out of it yet for stage number two. He's been ticking off faster laps compared to the leader. Was three tenths of a second faster lap time. An open lay. Dylan Clark just says, dude, you go on by. Three laps to go. Let's compare it once again. 53-72 versus a 53-12 out of Crowder. That is Crowder's fastest lap of the day, ladies and gentlemen. And there you see how he was compared to Broderick. 1.1 seconds faster. We'll check it on Clark. Same there. Closed in a second deficit. That's insane, that is. There's the pass on McCarthy for third position. Do not count Crowder out of the win for stage two yet. Meanwhile, nearly three wide behind him with McCarthy, Clark, and Broderick. Here comes Clark looking inside on Broderick for a position, and Crowder wants second on Rush. Two to go in stage two. The pits are closed. Into one, Crowder with the advantage. Can he clear Rush? Yes, he can. One more guy to face, and it's, and it's the driver that has the same amount of wins as Crowder on the year. Look at the toe Crowder's got. Here's the run to the inside. Crowder, the preferred line in a turn two. And clears him. Can you believe what Crowder has done? From outside the top 10 to top 15 to the race lead after he was he brought out the last yellow. Final lap underway in stage two. Drivers trying to use, trying to break the draft. Same with Crowder being a part of that. There's Rush currently in third. Let's go to the 10th position. Here is Brian Presler. He's got a battle ahead of him with David Smeal Jr. and Brian Wiggins. Wiggins may lose 10th to Presler here for a bonus point. And this battle is on. Here comes Miller in that Kyle Busch number 18 car. Trying to be a part of this. A pack race into turn number two. Oh, that's getting close, especially for 10th. Preslar doesn't have it. It currently belongs to Miller. But coming off of turn number three, it's Ashton Crowder. He was the stage one winner. He is now the stage two winner as Rush edges out Susie for second. And as they come to the line, Miller over Preslar as the yellow flies. The end of the day. Ashton Crowder is your stage two winner. When we come back, we'll have pit stops from the Tricky Triangle. So Ashton Crowder takes the win in stage number two, and we will pause here once again, and we will be right back for pit stops.
Pit Road is just ready to open for Ashton Crowder and company. And we'll review everything here when it comes to the tire stops here in just a moment. Once everyone finishes their stops. And I think everyone's coming in except for... We're thinking that Pear and Salter are staying out, but I think they have to come in once they're able to. Because they are currently a lap down. So Crowder winning the race off pit road, followed by McCarthy, Susie, Clark, and Rush. That's your top five. Then Wiggins, Broderick, Sakosi, Bice, and Diltz. One driver has stayed out, and that's Daniel Menzies. He leads a lap here at the start-finish line. Now let's take a look, by the way, at them. We'll look at the, the top ten specifically and show you the pit stop situation at the moment. This will give you a good test of how every driver is doing right now in terms of their stops. So we think that Crowder, who is in second spot, has only used has only used four sets of tires, so I think he's used up all of his tires possibly. If not, one more set to go. Daniel Menzies. Now, this is an interesting situation. We may have had a glitch on our end. He's only used up one set, so he's got three left to go. Kayla McCarthy has taken two sets, so she's got two left. Same with Josh Susie. D Dylan Clark has two left. Tyler Rush with two left. Brian Wiggins has to be careful because he has one left. Same with Ryan Broderick has to be extremely careful. Mr. Broderick has used up all of his sets of tires. So has to go 46 laps to the end. Robbie Bice has to use all four of his tires and Mark Sakosi has one set left. So that is how it's looking in terms of pit strategy to the end as we get ready to begin this final stage. And let's reset the field as we get ready to go back to the green flag. Menzies selects the inside line for this restart as we reset the field. Menzies on the inside. Row number two is Josh Susi and Kayla McCarthy in row three. That is where you find uh, Brian Wiggins. Excuse me. Row number three. Excuse me, row two is Josh Susi, Kayla McCarthy. Row three, Tyler Rush and Dylan Clark. Row four, Brian Wiggins and Ryan Broderick. And row five is Mark Sikosi and Ryan Bice. So we're going to ride on board on this restart with... Tyler Rush as we get set to go back to green. How about a little bit of crank it up to begin stage number three. Caution flag is out. And we've got a wreck involving Brian Wiggins in the number 
one slash 18, and that is not how he wants to begin stage number three. And we we're hearing this is a solo car wreck, so we will take a look at our replay and see what happened to Wiggins to bring out the caution. Oh, but inside on Broderick first, he washes up the track, gets loose, comes down on a one car, then spins right in front of traffic. And the fact that nobody hits him, even as if he's going in reverse, is a miracle. Let's show you another angle of that wreck. Oh, man. There is no room. I don't know what Wiggins was thinking, trying to get by Broderick, but he loses it all by himself. Clips that one car there of, I think that was Robbie Bice. And somehow nobody hits him. Let's ride on board. Nice save from Wiggins. Caution flag is back out once again. And while we're doing that, let's uh, listen to some race chatter. If we have it, we'll step aside. And one lap until we get the green flag. Here is how the restart looks. Daniel Menzies continues to lead on Ashton Crowder. Row two has Kayla McCarthy and Dylan Clark. In the third row, finding 
Tyler Rush, and next to him is Ryan Broderick. Row number, row number four is Mark Sikosi and David Smeal. And row five is Tyler Isley and Robbie Bice. So how about Isley in that 17? From having to already use his quick repair to being in a, a second crash, all the way back up inside the top 10. Great race for him so far. So Menzies, the control car once again as we get set to go back under the green flag. He's the control car, we'll have just over 40 laps of racing to go. Here at what turn four? Deadlocked on the restart as Crowder fired perfectly on Menzies' restart. Dead even coming into turn number one. Still Menzies with the preferred line. Is Crowder trying to go around the outside? Yes, he's trying to. Who's got the edge off of turn one? Ashton Crowder with the lead on around. What a move by Crowder in the 98. Comes down and tries to get the air off of Dylan Clark to take the air away from Dylan Clark as Menzies and Clark go at it for second spot. It's a mess meanwhile off of turn number two. Everyone gets away clean. So Clark to second, Menzies and McCarthy go at it for position number three. And McCarthy has it, Broderick makes his way up to fourth. Broderick still has to be careful. I think we've got one more stop left to go in this race and Broderick does not have any more tires. So in case this, if we have a long run to the end, that could be, that would be what he needs to get, get a top five, top 10 spot. If a yellow flag comes out, he would be in trouble. That is Isley and Smeal in a battle for eighth position. Meanwhile, in front, Rush inside on Broderick in turn two. Oh, Rush gets tight, nearly puts Broderick at the wall, and almost a crash behind them. Bice in the 28, nearly got turned by Crowell in the 54. And both of them make some good saves from spinning out. Sakosi and Rush side by side for position. How about Sakosi starting 20th spot, decided not to qualify, and he's all the way up into the fifth position. Takes it away from the 27 of Rush. That's a great shot down the long pond straight away. Top three, nose to tail. Clark trying to figure out which way, how, when do I go? And look down to the inside. Mid-pack. You've got the one, you got the one and the 77 up there. Good battle for a position. Josh Aaron edging Brian Wiggins at the stripe for 11th. As everyone ahead is single file working well together. And that's going to keep the 18 and the 77 losing some time. And behind them, James Miller trying to edge out Robbie Bice. Oh my goodness, just about chopped the front end off. And I'm sure Bice isn't going to like that as you ride on board with him. It's like he let off to avoid getting into the 21, but you want to keep it full throttle and turn two. Oh! Miller in the bite, so they go. Sixth caution of the evening's out. Fourth crash we've had at Pocono this evening. And another accident for James Miller. And that's heavy damage. Now I'm not too sure if he's already used his quick repair or not. Going to have to check, but you got to remember, always. 
check that quick repair off whenever you're in an accident. Let's watch from the from out aerial shot and show you how it happened again. Watch the green car. Oh, he just got really tight, bobbled in the tunnel turn, comes down in the boys, and around he goes, gets to the inside wall. Right along here with Miller. He's got really tight on the accident, gets the wall. I don't know if that was like a dis a downshift or a Let's watch that. I'm going to watch that again. And I'm going to watch the tap. Oh my goodness. He kept his foot in the throttle. When that happens, you've just got to let off of it. So we'll check and see if we have anyone coming into the pits. And if so, drivers are taking their final sets of tires, possibly... We'll check the pit strategy once again. The Crowder signaling he's coming in from the looks of it. That would put everyone in just a one-stop race. For the final stop, the window opens at lap number 60. So Crowder brings the car into the pits. And let's see if we have anyone staying up. Everybody is coming in. Now we'll see what happens if some drivers are in their either final set or have no more sets left. So that's the big question. Crowder, for him, I think this is his final set. And I want to watch Broderick here. Broderick is already out. That was his final set, I think, officially. And that it was. So it's Crowder, then Broderick with an incredible stop. Something tells me, though, he overshot his box. scroll up here and try to find Broderick here good in so we pretty much just gained a spot step aside here take another commercial break we will be right back for the restart
Here we go to get back under the green flag with 35 laps to go. Crowder brings him back, he leads. And immediately tries to break the draft off of Ryan Broderick. And oh my goodness, bringing Susie down to the apron and Broderick gets turned. That should not be a yellow and it is a yellow as he comes back up into traffic. That is all on Broderick. That is all on Broderick. I don't care what you say. And Broderick, I know he's speechless. And I think he's going to come back and show a little bit of displeasure at someone unless he's getting back up to where he belongs. Let's watch this closely. He's staying right where he is. And let's show you what brings out the yellow flag once again. Let's take you back first from this restart. Comes down, tries to shut the door on Susie. There it is. And yep, Susie just comes up. But that is a message sent to the league. Susie just sent a message saying, hey, if you're gonna take me off the track, I'm coming up and I'm taking you out. Let's watch that onboard with Josh Susie. Now here's the here's what we're gonna look at. Did the wheels did the wheel turn right? That is Broderick's on board as he's trying to save it. This is Sikosi's on board. Now watch this. Give me that Sikosi's on board. We want Susie's on board. Switch it to the right here. Just immediately comes down. And Sakosi, I, I don't know what Broderick's thinking here. And nope, Susie kept it straight. Broderick was just doing some extremely aggressive blocking there. So a couple of things we wanted to show you, by the way. Uh, let's show you our pit strategy. Show you how all the drivers are doing at the moment. That's our stint length there. Let's show you the pit time for all the drivers at home. We'll look at your leader first, Ashton Crowder. You see he's, he's used up all of his tires already. Show you our second place driver here in Josh Susie. Susie is second now. From the looks of it, he's already used three sets. Sikosi in third has used four sets. McCarthy in fourth has used three. Tyler Rush in fifth has used three. Uh, Dylan Clark in sixth has only used three sets. At 6.2 second stop was a gas only stop. In seventh is Tyler Isley. Now from the looks of that, he has used four sets. Uh, eighth is Josh Aaron. He has used from the looks of that boy looks like four sets and he's and all he's only got um left sides left that's from the looks of that ninth in ninth is preslar he's used four sets and tenth which is now bice um that's four tires as a gas only stop uh, four tires, four tires, four. So he's used four sets. So that's how your pit strategy looks at the moment. So 
So set to go back to green. The pink car is on the front row. Josh Susi and Ashton Crowder. Crowder selecting the outside line for the three star. And Susi probably glad he does not have to deal with um, Broderick at all. Row number two, Mark Zakosi and Kayla McCarthy. Row three, that's Tyler Rush and Dylan Clark. The fourth row, Tyler Isley. And as he moves up, Josh Aaron in row five, Brian Preslar and Robbie Bice. Coming off turn two, everyone moving up, double file. I would, I would watch Broderick closely, by the way. And Broderick, from the looks of it, five pit stops, and I, w I believe he has used all five sets. Taking a look to make sure, yeah, 14.23 was his last pit, st last pit stop time. Broderick can only go fuel only. And Broderick, from reports, he did stay out as well under the last cycle. Only two drivers pitted. That was Brian Wiggins and James Miller as we're back to green. Crowder holding serve, immediately clearing Josh Susie. Kayla McCarthy wants second spot here, possibly on this restart. She clutch shuts the door on Josh Susie, takes it away behind them. Dylan Clark trying to take away fourth on Mark Sakosi. Oh, Susie is loose, takes Sakosi. They save it on the big one. Part two is underway. At least 10 cars are involved. Oh my goodness. I don't know what to say. And Susie just put a car up on his lid. That was Smeal. We've got a lot to digest here, people. We've got David Smeal involved. That was the one that went upside down and was forced to tow it back. Josh Aaron in the 77. The big one is Josh Susi, who's pretty much led most of this, uh, who's pretty much been the, the, one, of the, one of the bigger leaders of this race outside of Ashton Crowder. Then you've got James Miller also involved. Tom Para. Brian Wiggins, a lot of drivers' nights are going to end here because a bunch of them have already used quick repairs. There's Robbie Bice, David Salter in that 88 machine. He's junk. Tyler Isley, I think his engine just got cooked up to an explosion. Yep, his night's over with. Justin Diltz reports that he was involved. There's front end damage to him. And Brian Preslar, we're hearing, was also involved, and he was. Tyler Rush also getting a piece of it. So let's go back and show you what happened on this restart. We'll go from that same angle we were watching, and we'll take it in slow motion. So in turn one, just too much gas for Susie. He loses control, tries to overcorrect, gets into Dylan Clark, and there's the wreck. Tyler Rush, Tyler Isley try to miss it. Preslar trying to go down the bottom. Oh, man, that's where it really started there. When he hits that inside wall and just careams around out of control. Oh, my goodness. That was a wreck, folks. Let's show you another reel. We'll take this real time from the blimp. This will give us a very good shot of what happened off of one. There you see it, and that inside hit there really caused a lot of it. And a lot of drivers just about had this miss with the front end, but then they get a tap from the quarter panel and get involved. Man, oh man. Well, I'll ride on board with a couple people here. We'll start things off with David Smeal. In the back of the pack here at the moment of the wreck. And then you know, oh man. Nowhere to go. And that was the situation with a lot of drivers in that wreck. And then just wait. Just wait. Gets hit from, I think that was Susie. And then he gets flipped up on its noggin. Josh Aaron. Probably... 
the one that caught the most and that's co rush comes down and then what a head-on shot into that wall. Some drivers will have quick repairs. A lot, though, will be done. Here's what it's like with Susie. Yeah, the car just got loose. It makes it 360, though, and then, oh, right there, that shot from, I want to say that was Salty, Sal Sautler. This is Miller. He was riding all the way in the back of the pack. Remember, he had already used his quick repair, was a part of that wreck two yellows ago. Hits the brakes and he misses the wreck. Your Taco Bell onboard of Tom Para. Also hitting the brakes and missing this wreck. How about Brian Wiggins? That's Broderick right in front of him, gets into him. Trying to miss, oh my, got the bumps in the inside wall and he's just a passenger. How about Robbie Bice? Nowhere to go. Dottler, or Salter, excuse me. Trying to miss, it got the bump clips the inside wall. Ooh, that shot there, I think that was Isley. That may have been dotes actually, let's watch. Oh my goodness, misses the two lanes. Oh, he got the quarter panel tip. All those spinning cars that were out of control, he had that missed. And here's Isley, almost had that hole opened up and then boom. Let's go to Preslar. Nowhere to go, oh man. A couple of big spins there too. And this is our final one with Rush. He about had a miss, was slowing down, got loose. Oh man, Diltz got him. Diltz came up right into him. So after all of what just went down, we have got, we'll pull this up for you right now, show you how many cars are on the lead lap. 13, but probably of the drivers that are left in this race, I'd say just about 10. See if we had anyone pit after that. Brian Wiggins pitted. Uh, same with Ryan Broderick, James Miller, uh, Tyler Rush, Alan Crowell. A lot of drivers pitted as the window was open, and they'll be good to go to the end. Top two, yet to pit. And it's Crowder who brings him back to green. Para does not go. Bobbles up the inside line. They have to check up on this restart. And that is the amount of drivers that are left in this. Three wide behind them. Aaron on the outside, McCarthy on the bottom. A lot of changes going throughout the field of the drivers that made their final stops. McCarthy trying, that is Josh Aaron, not for a position. So Crowder with a just about four tenths of a second lead on Brian Wiggins. Let's take a look at the pit strategy. Final time today, we, we will likely take a look at this. Of the drivers that recently pitted, we'll go to the stint length first. And there you see it. Excuse me, that is the stint length. Let's show up the pit stop lap. A couple of drivers just recently pitted of the ones that did not. Crowder, Para, and Miller. Let's take a look at Crowder first. He pitted on lap 53. We know he has to stop once again. Para also pitted on lap 53. As for Miller, he pitted on lap 57. It's going to be close for him. So pretty much with Crowder, this is a risky move for him on pitting. So 
So we'll just have to see what happens. He'll likely need one more caution. But all the cars behind them, like Brian Wiggins, Tyler Rush, Ryan Broderick, and Mark Sikosi, they're good to go to the end. Driver looking to the inside, that's in front of Susie. And that's Dylan Clark on Tom Para for seventh position. Clark makes it look easy, same with Susie. Those drivers using a quick repair after what happened. Others out of the race, like Tyler Isley, Salter, Bice, all done for the day. Smeal's trying to find a way to get back in it, but I don't see him getting back in this race. Diltz has lost a lot of time in 13th position without a front end. He's already used his quick repair. Looking at Miller, got some damage repaired, but still on the lead lap. Preslar got a quick repair, I think. Uh, that was about two or three cautions ago. Same with Crowell. That's Menzies on the radio. Who got a lot of damage because of that as well, because of that wreck as well. We go and we watch the Clark and Susie battle happening for seventh position on the track. See if Susie tries the inside. Not just yet holding his ground in turn two. Next week for the National Sim Racing League during the holidays, we are at Iowa Speedway for the Iowa 250. Under the lights for 250 laps. Start time 8.45 on twitch.tv slash Marty Sakala and, and on the National Sim Racing League Facebook page. Let's see here. Kuda McTravin earlier said, rest in peace, old boy. Robert Babcock says some racing. Isley says, would love to see that rock again. That was ridiculous. Well, Tyler, we pretty much have no racing going at the moment, so why not? At your, at, at your convenience. Show this to you from TV2 from your perspective in real time. There's when Susie got loose. Just look at that. That's like that. It's like, you know, the Dynaco 400 in Cars 1 when uh, Chick Hicks pretty much took out the entire field to try and win the championship over Lightning McCreen. It just came to my mind. Tom Parrott just had his best lap of the, had his personal best today over 53-57. For those wondering at home, currently in the ninth position. 22 laps to go, but again, we are following the situation with Ashton Crowder. We'll need a yellow if he wants to win this race because he last pitted on lap 53. It is just about a 30 to 35 lap fuel stint. Crowder is in fuel conservation mode. Let's see if we have an onboard and see if he is saving. He is not saving at the moment. He's pushing it. We'll see if he can go the distance, but Honestly, I don't see it happening based on what's going on. You got a freight train behind you, it sounds like. Honestly, wow, that was so funny. I'm rolling. <laughs> it was, then he went poof. In pit lane, um, we were watching it. Um, maybe, yeah, yeah, they are. Because uh, most of them had to come down and get a fast repair because they all got wrecked. Most of them, at least. That's Menzies talking. Got Ryan Broderick in a battle with Mark Sikosi for fourth position. I think Broderick's got the cleaner car over Sikosi. We see that paint scuff on the left side. But Broderick again continuing to do some interesting blocking. He's the one making the first lane situation. Got McCarthy behind him. And that battle for P4 on track. So 20 laps to go at Pocono. Ashton Crowder continues to lead in Long Pond, Pennsylvania. When we come back, we're taking you to the finish. Stay with us as we go side by side.
18 laps to go in the Pennsylvania 225. Live from Pocono Raceway, so glad you could join us today for National Sim Racing League coverage. Marty Sakala with you on the call. You were watching on track, a good battle for position. Josh Tucci and Caleb McCarthy trying to work their way up with Tyler Rush. Got to give credit for Tucci after the last caution where he was involved in a blinding accident. Able to make his way up with a quick comparative force, and I think we say the same for Tyler Rush as he is up to second position. Ashton Crowder continues to lead. We are under caution. And we just realized we were under caution. Ryan Broderick has gone around in the number five. And that is the yellow that Ashton Crowder wants to see because he can either pit or he can save some fuel. Not pushing the clutch in. We'll check and see what he does here in just a moment, but first, the yellow for Broderick. Yeah, yeah, he tried to shut the door, uh, he tried to shut the door on Clark, and Clark was not having it. They oh my goodness. And, um, wow! How close can you get for Broderick? That's the second time he's done that tonight. We saw that with Susie, and now we're seeing that with Clark. How long can he go by doing this? I don't know. But you know what Brad Kozlowski once said, I am not lifting. This is from the rear end of Broderick. Cut him off there, try to cut him off there. That close to hitting the inside wall. Are you kidding me? And let's watch the Ryan, let's watch from Dylan Clark's on board. There it was, held his line once again. Pit road is open and everybody is coming in for fuel. Especially Ashton Crowder, because he needed that yellow big time. We'll see if anyone stays out here and we'll watch Crowder closely. Remember in terms of sets for drivers, it is five sets, and Crowder taking his final sets of tires, and we'll see here. Some drivers have saved up a set. And apparently some drivers have. Crowder comes out as the leader, followed by in the battle for second. Rush, then Susie, then Wiggins, then Clark. Chris, I'm taking a wave around. Now, I think that this race was not set up properly, because I see... And the reason why is Ashton Crowder, Tyler, because I'm seeing a guy like Josh Susi with seven pit stops and just looking to make sure. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, there's a better example. Look at Crowder. There you see it right there. Five, five sets he's already used. Zakosi, that's like a six set he's used today or something. I don't know. That should be taken a look at though for sure, but everyone is good to go to the end in terms of fuel. So the yellow, absolutely what Crowder wanted. While we add it as we wait to get ready to go back to green. Want to take this opportunity to give a shout out to a couple of people. First off, our sponsors, the Speed Demon Corporation with setups, graphics, and television, affordable SEO and marketing, elevated outdoors, and butt kicker. And of course, as always, if you're interested in starting up your sim racing career, make sure you go to www.iracing.com. Featuring the brand new Mercedes AMG F1 E12 W Performance. Excuse me. W12 E Performance. It's an incredible car. I definitely recommend you buy it. It's it's just amazing to, to try out. Waiting for one more driver. That is Smeal. So we're waiting to get back to green with 15 laps to go. Lights are off. Let's reset the field for you. 
Browder leads. He selects the in the outside line for this restart with Tyler Rush next to him. Row number two, it's Brian Wiggins and jo excuse me, Josh Susie and Brian Wiggins. Row three, Dylan Clark and Mark Sakosi in row four. Alan Crowell and Tom Para and row five, Kayla McCarthy and James Miller as they make their way off of turn two. Fourteen laps to go when we take the green flag and we're just hoping it is a sprint to the finish. Talk with the top three, by the way, after this race. Want to give a shout out as well to our race control director today, Chris Lynn. He's had a lot on his plate today with nine cautions in this race. Actually, seven cautions if we're going to go crashes only. Or eight, eight cautions, I should say. Back to green. Good restart for Crowder. Holds serve. Brian Wiggins wants second spot on Tyler Rush. Can he get the position away? Yes, he does. Shuts the door on Tyler Rush. Rush thinks about going back to the inside. He cannot move Wiggins up to P2. Susie back in fourth. Sakosi faces a challenge for Dylan Clark for fifth. Susie got Ray loose. Dylan Clark nearly gets the apron. Susie really stacked them up big time. Trying to find a way down to the inside. Susie still in third. Sakosi fourth. Rush all the way back to fifth. McCarthy wants P6 on Dylan Clark. Not going to get it just yet. Brian Wiggins currently running in the second spot. It would be his best finish ever in an NSRL event. His best finish came last week at the Nashville Super Speedway. His first ever top five on the season. Would love to get back-to-back -to -back top fives on the year. Look out, McCarthy all the way down to the basement. That's inside on Rush and Clark. Three wide and one. Somebody's got to give. And that one given, I think, is Tyler Rush. Dylan Clark with the advantage. Held the high ground perfectly. Up on the, up on the attic. Takes fifth. Rush back to sixth. McCarthy all the way down to seventh position. I think everyone in here tonight has probably used at least one quick repair. You know what? I'm going to do something for fun here. Let's chat with Chris Lynn. Chris, it's Marty up in the booth. I got one question I just want to ask you. What's up? Go to the entry list. Does anyone have zero X tonight? <laughs> no. The lowest is Kayla McCarthy with one. There you have it. Kayla McCarthy with one X so far for right now. I hope we don't jinx her. I hope we don't jinx her. Who's the second lowest? Uh, Alan Kroll with four. Tied with Press Brian Pressler with four. Tyler Rush with four. Okay. Good to hear. Thank you. We got a battle for a second, so I got to get back to my work. Josh Zussi nails the pass on Brian Wiggins. Takes away P2. The pink cars back up in the top two. We're coming to 11 to go this time by at Pocono. Can Wiggins hold on to third position? Can he get back-to-back -back top fives? Sakosi currently fourth. Clark is in fifth. Tyler Rush in sixth. Rush in sixth wants that top five and wants to end it. All the drivers currently snaking like it's the Indianapolis 500. 11 laps remain. Can Susie close in on Ashton Crowder? Let's compare the lap times of the top two. Susie faster the last two laps, closing in by just about a tenth of a second and continues to close in. He's got the draft on Crowder. He's right there. It's down to 0 .17, 0 .15. Closing in big time. Susie doesn't look down low just yet. Again, checking the gap at the start-finish line this time. A quarter of a second faster was Josh Susi. Far from over, a 10-lap shootout in Long Pond, Pennsylvania. 
You've got just about seven drivers under a blanket that have a chance to win this race. Crowder, Susie, Wiggins, Sakosi, Clark, Rush, and McCarthy. All right along, now the question is, who's going to jump out of line and take a chance down to the inside for the race lead or maybe even down to the outside? Everyone holding up on the top shelf on the straightaways and going all the way down low on the bottom. Oh, Wiggins takes the wall. That's a hard shot for Wiggins and he bows out. That's a shame. Was looking for back-to-back -to -back top fives and could be out of it. Oh, Crowder and Susie. They're trying to break the draft of Sikosi in third. That's what they were doing. So Wiggins falls back to sixth position and holds up McCarthy. She could be out of it as well with nine to go. And I think she, I think McCarthy is not liking it right now. Man, she can't even pass Wiggins. May dump it, may dump him, and now Wiggins lets up. So now a five-car battle to determine the winner of the Pennsylvania 225. Crowder, Susie, Sakosi, Clark, and Rush. Three KTS drivers with a shot at a win. And then you've got Clark. Oh, excuse me, four KTS drivers with a shot at the win. Clark also racing for KTS. The only driver that's not at KTS, uh, excuse me, the only driver in KTS not in the battle is Tyler Rush, who's out of the race. Mark Sakosi out of the Speed Demon camp. Stuck in a battle here. Nobody wants to work with them. All the KTS drivers working together. They're, they are one through four at the moment. Sakosi in trouble all the way back to fifth. Needs to hope for a mistake. If he tries the inside, everyone's going up the track. They do not want to work with Sakosi at all. That top four all want to race together in the battle for the win. Seven to go at Pocono. Clark trying to break the draft off Sakosi. Works with Tyler Rush. There you see how the positions have changed. Wiggins is back to seventh after the major wall scrape. the tall turn. Sakosi had a higher groove than Rush. Trying to break it but couldn't. Six to go with the start finish line. Ashton Crowder has won the first two stages of this race so far. Every driver in the top five was in a wreck at one point. Probably the one that took the most damage of them all was Josh Susie in the number 12. He has fought his way back up into P2 and could challenge for the win on Ashton Crowder. And they're all a snake trying to break the draft of Sakosi. It's Sakosi pretty much versus everyone else. Give credit, meanwhile, while we are at it to a couple of other drivers. I think the first one we gotta give credit to is Tom Perra, currently running in the ninth position. Oh my goodness, and to say this about Perra, for Perra, this would be his second top 10 in three races. Best finish is 10th at uh, Charlotte in the World 300 or whatever it was, and could get a ninth place finish, which would be his best of the season. Continuing back up front, Susie is closing, is closing a little bit on Crowder. Crowder not done at getting this win. You see Rush looking up on the outside, trying to have a better arc in turn two. Pretty much just like Indianapolis. Sakosi, what is it gonna take for him to try and get a win? The only thing he can see in front of him is some guy's Twitch account. Road when we fucking, he fucking 
It's Mio on the radio. We're just reporting something, but he's not in this race. Four laps to go, 10 miles remain at Pocono. Can Ashton Crowder get his sixth win of the season, or Susie, can he get his sixth win? For Ashton Crowder, by the way, if he wins this race, it'd be his sixth win and six starts with the National Sim Racing League. Susie, meanwhile, pretty much backing two through five up. Crowder has increased the lead up to a half second. Let's compare the lap times once again. There you see it. Susie a tenth slower last time by, a tenth and a half slower. We'll check the gap this time by. Three to go for Ashton Crowder. Just about two tenths slower for Susie that time by. They'll likely need a caution. They want to get back in the fight and make it a, a KTS horse show. Dylan Clark trying to get a run inside. And Clark right there with Susie. They may race for second spot. And Sikosian Rush likely racing for P4. Driver in the pits, that's Justin Diltz. Two to go for Crowder at the line at Pocono. Sikosia run inside on Tyler Rush. Rush probably saying in the team chat he needs help. Is everyone going up on the outside? They are not, they are all split away. Where Sikosia, can he clear a rush for P4? And the answer is yes he can. Sikosi takes away fourth position as they go down the long pond straight. What a run for Ashton Crowder. Was in that wreck earlier today with Jimmy Barr during stage two. Took a quick repair and fought his way back up to win stage number two. White flag is in the air. One lap to go for Ashton Crowder. His eye racing number may say number 98. Excuse me, his trading paints number may say number 98, but his eye racing number is one. And we can all see why his number is one. Because this guy deserves to be number one in the National Sim Racing League. Down the long pond straight for the final time as he breaks the draft of Josh Susi. It is over a three quarter of a second lead on the number 12 in the background. Makes it through. Well, if race control agrees with it, Delt fucking agrees with it, uh, several of the drivers agree with it, then we need to make a change. There's no reason the car that fucking causes the wreck and destroys half the field is finishing this race back. Oh boy, it's Mio not happy, we'll mute that. And off turn number three for the final time. Six wins and six starts. Ashton Crowder wins at Pocono. Fast repair. Sorry for your luck. Great, guys. Good ass race there, uh, Crowell. Susie second, Clark third, Sakosi fourth, Rush fifth. It is a top three KTS lockout. Absolutely. Good run, guys. That was fun. Ashton Crowder looking forward to doing some donuts. We'll talk with your top three here in just a moment. Good race, guys. Anyone has any thoughts or concerns or any suggestions for moving on the road? Uh, I'll be in the hauler. I believe Dilts and Mark and we are set to go to talk with our top three as Crowder does some boat burnouts. We'll start things off here with Dylan Clark in that number 34 machine. Dylan, I know you got a rear end uh, damage, but that was a crazy race you had to deal with. And hey, I know you'll take a podium finish for sure. 
Absolutely. That was one crazy finish. Um, it was a crazy race, too, all around. Oh, I didn't even realize I had rear end damage. Um, really, it was just uh, just try and keep your nose clean after you get uh, some damage and try and minimize it. And uh, really just kept uh, my nose clean as best I could. And luckily, I didn't get too much damage from that big wreck. Uh, so it's getting loose. How about the strategy with KTS? It, was, it looked like pretty much just another intermediate race for you guys, working together and getting the top three lockout. Oh, yeah, it was uh, great working with uh, KLS, Alex, Crowder, Rush, um, really everyone involved. Isley, too. Um, it's just saying he was out so early, but um, really just working with KTS is going to uh, really help me and help the team move forward. And hopefully, with this uh, 1 2 3 lockout, we can. Uh, Seal up the team points. Who do you want to give shout-outs to tonight? Uh, C4 Motorsports, uh, Nitro Racing Setups, KTS, um, Kayla, and Saucy for let me run with them, and uh, my parents for getting me this awesome sim rig. All right. We'll let you go, man. Nice job tonight. Thank you, sir. Yep. Dylan Clark taking home a third-place finish, and let's talk with our second-place finisher, that being Josh Susie. Josh, before I get to uh, the race overall and the strategy, how tough was turn one for you tonight? I saw you get loose two times, and one of them caused uh, the huge one. <laughs> yeah, that uh, it was a very interesting night, and uh, I know there were some people upset that the guy that kind of stacked up the whole field there finished second, but, uh, you know, that happened sometimes. I was fortunate enough to still have my faster pair, and, yeah, it just snapped out of nowhere. I wasn't expecting it. I left it a little early, let Kayla in line, and uh, just got wicked loose, kind of like Kyle Busch today. But I'm not Kyle Busch, so I didn't save it. And uh, you know, I had her counter steered, and it was starting to come back to me. And then when it when she stopped sliding, it just hooked, and I had no control. So I tried to lock it down the best I could, but uh, unfortunately, quite a few people got taken out. And then at the very end of it, I flipped over Smeal like a turtle on his shell, and <laughs> I felt bad for him. But rules are rules, though. That's for sure. Overall, though, you had that, like you said, you had that quick repair and were able to fight your way back up to second. You had a great card tonight. I asked the same thing to Dylan Clark. Talk to me about the strategy the KTS team had. It was pretty much just another intermediate race, working together, and you guys got a top three lockout. Well, yeah, I mean, that's the number one goal. Uh, first and foremost, before anything personal coming into these races is uh, especially draft-dependent tracks like this, man. It's work with the team, work with the team, kind of like you saw – um, I don't remember who implemented it. I think Ford's first at the super speedways in real life. Um, you know, it's kind of like a collaboration that, hey, we're going to help each other before we do anything for ourselves and then come down to the end of the race, we'll, we'll duke it out. But uh, these cars are so dependent on momentum and draft that you need to have someone you can trust to stay committed. And that's just the game plan going into every week. We're, we're going to stick together. We're going to work together. It, you know, at the end of the day, all that does is just help us get the best possible finish we can get. So, you know, we stuck true to that. A couple of guys uh, had some bad luck, but for the most part, we uh, we stayed good on the game plan. I want to ask you as well about racing against Ashton. Uh, you guys have been duking at it for the wins. I know right now you're pretty much dominating the regular season points lead. But, of course, Crowder's got more of the wins now, 6-5. to five. I don't want to ask if it's frustrating or embarrassing. I'm not going to be that reporter for the Buffalo Bills, but what what's it like racing with Ashton? What what would you put into words about racing against Ashton? Nothing bad, of course, just something positive about racing against him because I know you guys are racing each other pretty well. Well, I mean, there's a reason why this guy's a pro series driver on the, on the iRacing platform. Um it doesn't matter if it's fixed or if it's open. I can't say it's a setup. It's just the dude's talented like crazy, man. And uh, every time I'm behind him, I'm trying to learn. I'm trying to learn. I'm trying to learn because, you know, he knows what to do. And uh, it just makes me better as a driver. So I can't thank him enough for, for taking the time to show up in this league. And, you know, he puts a whooping on us, but uh, I take it as a, a lesson to go to school and try to learn and better myself. And, yeah, I can get frustrating. Um like last week, I had a big run, and, and then I got left out by Sakosi. But, uh, you know, that's that's what it is. I had one shot tonight. Um, I don't know, honestly, if it would have made a difference if I could have got to his outside or his inside going into one with, uh, I think it was about eight laps to go. I'd finally got a good enough of a run. Um, 
I think he would have blown back by me. I don't think I would have been able to defend that. But dude's just a world-class talent, and uh, he had a real bad fast piece tonight, man. Uh, he had better straight line speed than me, and he can hold more speed in the corner. So it's uh, very, very hard to compete against that. And I think even if we would have had equal stuff um, completely, he still probably would have walked the dog on me. But, you know, I take it as humbly as I can, and I try to learn from it and uh, try to get better and – you know, if it helps me improve, then who am I to say that's a bad thing? Who do you want to give shout-outs to tonight? Uh, everyone at KTS, great teamwork tonight. Good job. Uh, Charge Racing, I had a good run last night. Uh, it was good to see Ashton get a top five in the Pro Series. And uh, everyone that shows up tonight, I think we had some new people. I hope they had a good time. I saw a couple Dodge paint schemes out there that looked pretty sick. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it was a good race. Pocono, I love Pocono. So, um, you know. I uh, wish we ran some of these tracks twice, but that's not how the cookie crumbles. So we'll just go with it. And as always, Marty, big shout out to you. Uh, you do a great job. I love your energy in the booth. And uh, I hope we put on a good race for you. Appreciate it as always, man. Nice job tonight. Thank you. So that's Josh Susie, our second place finisher. Time to go to victory lane. Talk with Ashton Crowder. Sixth win in six starts on the year. Ashton, congratulations. My goodness, just... The mic is all yours. I don't know how the heck you did it again. Uh, even from a bathroom break, even from a wreck with Jimmy Bard or a quick repair, you were just on fire tonight. The mic is yours. I appreciate that, Marty. Um, yeah, uh, we got on that wreck. That that was uh, very unfortunate. That was closer than what I would like to – that was a closer move than I would like to do. But I was like, you know what? I don't have much time to get back to the lead, so I gotta I gotta push hard. That's what I did. Turned out bad. Learn from the mistakes, and then the next run, car just came alive. Um, I don't know if it was the heat cycle or what, but um, yeah, I mean we were flying, uh, and I mean it was really easy to get back to the lead, so it was um. I, I was pretty speechless with that one, but um, yeah, I mean, it was it, besides the wreck, it was a really well executed race. Um, I'm thankful for the uh, quick repair. I would have been in pretty rough shape if I didn't have that. But you know, I I love Pennsylvania. That's where the crowd cheers. Um, I love Pennsylvania. I love Pocono. Um, it's just it's a great place to be. It's a lot of old people. Um, but cool people. You know, old people are cool. There's some not so cool people in Pennsylvania, but just, just like that everywhere. But you know, overall, the the good outweighs the bad, and I, I couldn't be more thankful for it. Hey, Pocono loves you back, though, man. That's for sure. Uh, how about the strategy with KTS? I've been asking all the other drivers in the top three, just like an, another super speedway race. It worked well for you guys once again, uh, working together, trying to break the draft of other non-KTS drivers, and you guys got a top three out of it. Yeah, um, on my side of things, I pretty much mute my Discord and stuff because I don't, I don't really want to hear what um, anybody else is doing. Because um, you know, with, it, with my like usual races or with my like pro races and stuff or whatever I'm doing there, you know, I, I'm the only one out there, so I'm not getting a ton of information, and I, I like to kind of practice uh, how I play. Not saying this is practice uh, per se, because that's rude. Um, but I try to keep everything uh, the same, consistent. Um, so I, I wasn't really working with any of them uh, the whole night. I don't really think I, I. They were probably pretty annoyed with me when I started side drafting them. But uh, yeah, it's, you know, it's just cool people to talk to, and two of them, uh, uh, Susie and uh, McCarthy. Oh, uh, Michaela, as I call her, um, they're on charge racing with me on our, uh, like, uh, pro series stuff and everything involving that. So I already got a good connection there. Um, but, yeah, they, they do a great job, though. I, I kind of just piggyback off of what they do because, I mean, they pretty much control the races, and I just try to put myself out front and make it hard for them. Um, yeah. And, it, and it's put me in really good positions uh, thus far, so... Next, yeah, they're, yeah. Uh, they're good. Next week, Iowa. Just give us your expectations for that. Um, 
I might make up an excuse not to race that to keep my win streak alive, but I'm joking. I'll definitely be showing up for that. That's a good uh, bumpy track. I, I don't really have like a baseline per se for this car on anything that's um, you know slower than like 140 miles per hour. So that's gonna be a that's gonna be a real challenge to get the car working. Um, I figure the setup will probably port over pretty well. I, I've used the same setup at every racetrack thus far. It doesn't matter if it's bumpy or not. Um, use the same setup and just kind of port it over. So hopefully, hopefully it'll be all right. But I, I think it'll be a good race. I don't know if it has the track surface updates like you know some of these other tracks do. But if it does, it'll be really good with that. But if it doesn't, then we'll probably be on the wall. Finally, go ahead and um, give us those shoutouts tonight. Yeah. Yeah, you know, everybody at Charge Racing, uh, shout out to all my PA people. I don't know many PA people, but everybody that I do know is cool, uh, especially Justin Diltz. I found out that um, he is actually from the same town. Well, he went to school, uh, high school, the same town that my girlfriend is from, my whole family is basically from. I uh, found that out, so that's pretty cool. But he, I think he's a PA guy too. Yeah, sure he is. Um, so yeah, shout out to all those people. Um, shout, you know, shout out to you for putting on the broadcast, Marty. I appreciate you. You gave me that follow back on Twitter. That was pretty cool. <laughs> um, I mean, I don't really have any partners, sadly. Um, but yeah, you know, the league, all that. But I, I want to give a huge shout out to uh, Justin Bieber. As always, I forgot him the past couple months, but he's really my inspiration. Everything I do is modeled after him. So, yeah. And uh, oh, and shout out Drake. <laughs> he was telling me to breathe. I don't want to breathe. <laughs> so, yeah. Thank you, Marty. No problem. All right. We'll let you go. Congrats on the win, man. <laughs> Thank you. Talk to you tomorrow, too. So, I hope. Oh, crap. I forgot. What were you saying? Yeah, if I if I don't wreck, I will definitely see you there. <laughs> All right, sounds good. See you, man. All right, see you. So Ashton Crowder taking home the win. Your official results from tonight: it's Crowder, Susie, Clark, Zakosi, Rush, McCarthy, Wiggins, Crowell, Para, and Preslar. The top five. So that's going to do it for our coverage tonight. Next week we go to the Iowa Speedway. For the Iowa 250, so don't miss out on that. Shout out to our sponsors, Speed Demon Setups, Graphics, and Television, Affordable SEO and Marketing, Elevate Outdoors, and Butt Kicker. On behalf of all of us at NSRL, from our main guy in charge, Mark Zakosi, our race control director is Chris Lynn, Marty Sakala signing off. We congratulate Ashton Crowder, six wins and six starts, and it comes tonight at Pocono Raceway. Thank you all for joining us tonight. So long from the Tricky Triangle, everyone.